I've been told if you took John 3.16 or you took the whole Bible and you boiled it down from one book to one chapter to one verse, that one verse be John 3.16 because it's the essence of our Christian faith. It is what we stand on. It's what gives us hope for the future that there is even a future. Welcome. We are so glad that you have chosen to join us today. We pray that you are blessed by the music and the ministry of the service you are about to participate in. We are so glad that you have chosen to be here and we pray that you are blessed. Now, if this is your first time, we ask that you let us know where you're watching from because we have people in so many different countries. And if this message touches you, if there's something that blesses you, please leave a comment, give us a thumbs up, a heart. We just love it when you show your praise for what God is ministering to you. It's not for us, this is all about Him. So we want you to be a participant, not just an observer in this service with us today. And if there's some way that you need to contact us, if you have a question, if you need prayer, if you need a Bible, our information will be at the end of the video where you can reach out to us, you can call us, you can message us through Facebook. There's so many different ways, but mainly you can visit our central hub at GodspeedMinistry.com and all of the information is there. And if you want to continue your worship through giving, which is always goes to God, then we invite you to do that also through our central hub, GodspeedMinistry.com. Now, let's get into why you came into the message. Glad to have you with us this morning. Uh, we're going to talk about two beginnings, two news, so to speak. We're going to start off with Genesis 1-3. Uh, I do have a, a pad and pencil up here. If anyone has a prayer request, if you would, just go ahead and come up. And uh, you can write it on the pad, and we'll get it out to our prayer warriors. And we'll get it out to the, the United States and uh, see how God wants to deal with it. Uh, let's start with Genesis 1, 1 through 3. It's a, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And all the earth was without form and without was void. Darkness was upon the face of the earth and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the earth and God said, let there be light. The second one we want to look at, it comes from John 3.16. And we go from John 3.16 to John 19. For God so loved the world, and usually what I do is I don't cross out the word world, but above it I include my name, because that's who it's speaking to. That he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness, rather than light, because their deeds should be reproved or exposed. John 3.16, the hope diamond of the Bible. 26 words of hope beginning with God and ending with life and urging us to do the same. Brief enough to write on a napkin or memorize in a moment, yet solid enough to weather 2,000 years of storm and questions. If you know nothing of the Bible, start here. If you know everything in the Bible, return here. Key phrase right here. The heart of the human problem is the heart of the human. Let me repeat that. Let me repeat that slowly. The heart of the human problem is the heart of the human. Pretty profound, huh? This came from a book by uh, uh, Max Lucado. If you're interested, you can pick it up. But he has a whole book on John 3.16. Uh, there was a profound preacher here in the United States and he kept having this guy by the name of John come up to him and says, can I come preach at your church? 
And he kept saying, I don't really like somebody coming into my church. I want to teach my church the Word of God. But he persisted and he persisted. And there was a time when he was going to be out of the pulpit. And he was going to be gone. So he remembered this guy and he got a hold of him and said, yes, if you would like to come into my church, you're welcome to come in and preach the Word of God. He was there for a couple weeks. Every night he preached on John 3.16. Because he could take John 3.16 and he could apply to every aspect of the Word of God. He told if you took John 3.16 or you took the whole Bible and you boiled it down from one book to one chapter to one verse, that one verse would be John 3.16. Because it's the essence of our Christian faith. It is what we stand on. It's what gives us hope for the future, that there is even a future. We live in times that I never expected to ever see in my lifetime. The things that have happened in the last couple, three, four years have just astound me of what we are capable of without the presence of God. But with God, we have light. We have light. Nothing is better than to turn on a light in a dark room and it expels the dark. It drives the darkness from the room. A relationship with Christ drives the darkness out of our lives and replaces it with the light of life, of hope, of energy, of commitment, of doing things that we were never thought we were capable of doing. I want to relate a couple of stories in my personal life that brought me to a saving grace of Jesus Christ. On April the 6th, on 1980, Easter Sunday, I walked an aisle and I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. Now these stories were leading up to this event. I didn't really consider them as even a part of the event. But looking back on it, it was a path that God had me on to come to a place of repentance. The first was started when I was in high school. I was at a party. A friend of mine by the name of Rusty was having a bad day. Apparently he, had, he was drunk. Well, apparently he was drunk. But he had just broken up with his girlfriend and he was so depressed he was just moaning and groaning and he was saying some awful things about himself and, and even to the point that he wanted to, just, to hurt himself. And it was really putting a downer on the whole party. But yet, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to console this man other than just to listen to him and then to get up and leave. Several years later, as I'm a, a young adult, I hear that this same guy has turned his life around, he's gone off to Bible college, is now becoming a preacher. And he's now come home for the summer break, and he lived 30 miles from where I live. And I was driving a truck, and I had a flat tire. And he happened to be working in a tire repair shop at the time for his summer break to earn some money. Well, I stop in there just to say hi and see how he's doing. And the first thing out of this man's mouth is his declaration of his faith and recognition of Jesus Christ in his life. Now, at that time, I was not a believer. Uh, I was living my own life, doing what I wanted to, when I wanted to, and it made me very uncomfortable. So uncomfortable that I couldn't wait to escape his presence, to go back into the shop and hide behind the glass until he finished fixing my flat. Then I got my ticket, paid my bill, walked out and said hi, said bye, and I'm on my way. Not to think about it again. Years later, I've gone off to school to uh, a place in San Antonio called Hallmark Aerotech. And this particular day, apparently the teacher wasn't in the classroom. And this guy gets up and he starts taking over the class. And not only does his class listen to what he has to say, but other classroom are beginning to come in and stand around the wall to listen to what this man has to say. I got curious and so I walk into his room and this man is talking about Jesus again. And I'm standing there and he's telling the story that his daughter of seven or eight years old had never seen him draw a sober breath. Never seen him sober. He's always been drunk. 
And then he's telling his story of his conversion into Christ and how he became saved. And again, I could not wait to get out of that room, to get away from that, because I was under conviction and I didn't want to hear it. I wanted no part of it. None of it. I was fine with the way I was living. Didn't want anybody to tell me when and where and what to do. But years later, when I worked for Santa Fe, I had a job that's called a relief machine operator. And it was my job to fill in when somebody was absent or on vacation or we were shorthanded. Otherwise, I had nothing to do my whole shift. I could go where I wanted to, do what I wanted to, spend my time where I wanted to, as long as I was available. And one night, I came across a little zippered Bible about that big. It was the whole Word of God. And I'm talking about tiny, little, tiny words. I got curious. And I read Revelation. Okay? I don't know how many of you are familiar with Revelation. We just got through going through a uh, four or six month study on Revelation. Very intriguing. New information that I learned. But this Easter Sunday, I asked my wife, hey, let's just go to church. You know, it's Easter a guy that I worked with saw me reading the Bible and said, uh, you know, here's a good church to go to. And I said, okay, there's so many of them in Amarillo. I have no clue which one to go to. He said, it's a good one. They'll welcome you. They, uh, they'll love on you. And they'll whatever they can. I could not wait for that man to, on the, in the pulpit to shut his mouth so I could go forward. 27 years old. Smoke two and a half to three packs of cigarettes a day. Couldn't wait to get down front. And the guy came up and stood beside me or knelt beside me and said, Would you like to sing or say the sinner's prayer or would you like to say your own? I said, I would like to say my own. I said, God, I know that I'm a sinner. If I die tonight, I'm going to hell. Will you come in my heart and save me? And that's it. And the guy said, is that all? I said, yes, sir. But when I got up off my knees, I realized for the first time in my life, I was not carrying a backpack full of rocks, which is my past, my sins, my burdens, my guilt, my shame. I left at that altar so that I never had to go back there and do it again. Now there's the light. The light finally came on. It came on in me. And again, I now became that obnoxious person that when I showed up at family functions, they'd say, oh my God, here comes Uncle Jerry. <laughs> Everybody run. He's going to start preaching to us. Everybody find some place to hide because he's going he's gonna to start telling us about Jesus. And I did. And I was told, he said, you are so obnoxious. I can't not. You are just, you're just trying to cram this down my throat. I say, I, I don't think that's what I'm trying to do. But when we're under conviction, that's what it seems like we're doing. People are trying to cram this Christianity down our throats, trying to force us into something we don't want. But if they only knew what we know, what it does to a man and a woman and a child's heart, to know that when they die, they're going to heaven. We're going to the light. We're not going to the darkness. We're going to the light. I have a few more scriptures to give you. How many of you know who Tim Tebow is? Outspoken Christian. Well, Tim Tebow played for Florida as their quarterback. And they were in the championship game. And all season long, he'd been putting Philippians 4.13 underneath his uh, eyes. And the coach was okay with it. And then all of a sudden, God wants him to put John 3.16 under his eyes for the championship game. The coach is very... Uh, superstitious and he was a little bit concerned about changing scripture because it's what got them to the championship game he was a little concerned about changing it he finally convinced him that it was okay so he changed it to john 3 16. that game 94 million people google john 3 16. three years later when he's playing for the denver broncos 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 he puts John 3.16 underneath his eyes again. 
He's finished the game. They won the game. He's going back to do the uh, interview with all of the sportscasters. And the PR guy comes up to him and says, do you realize what happened? He says, no, what, what, what's up? He says, do you know what just happened? He said, no, what happened? He said, do you know you threw for 316 yards? Total yards for the day. You averaged 3.16 per reception. Three yards and 16 for every rush. The ratings for the game were 31.6. Time spent on offense, 31 minutes and 6 seconds. 90 million people Google 316. You know what Tim's <laughs> uh, response was? Who doesn't know what John 316 is? But as a Christian, we know that. People that have never been introduced to it have no clue what John 316 is. So we have an opportunity to do that. There is, in Jer uh, Jeremiah 29, 11 to 13. Let me read that to you. For I know the thought that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And you shall seek me and find me, when you shall search for me with all your heart. So when we search for him with all our heart, he is willing to come and he will speak with us. And the last verse I want to uh, give you is from... Yeah, 2 Corinthians says, Behold, all things that are passed away. Behold, all things become new. This is a new year. We have an opportunity. This is February. It's an opportunity to do and make changes as we go throughout the year to uh, make a difference, uh, to change things that we don't like uh, in, in our life and become uh, a, someone that is giving out to others. Uh, I see it as parents here. I've said this I don't know how many times. Your kids are so fortunate. You are doing such an awesome job with your kids. Some of you are uh, in the role of a step parent, and you're working with your stepchildren. Uh, you have other, you have your own kids, and you're doing something that the world wishes they had. A male role model in their life that they see what it's like to be a man. Not many have that opportunity. I've shared this before and I'll share it again. In prison, 90% of the men that we we talk to will tell you they had no male role model. All they had was mom. Sometimes mom was a good mom. A lot of times mom was not a good mom. But they had no one that, that they could look at that would show them what it was like to be a real man. I talked to one young man, and he was in his 20s, and he was, I was astounded at his statement. I did not know that it was wrong to sell drugs. I did not know that it was wrong to sell drugs. My mom and my dad sold them, my aunt sold them, my uncle sold them, my cousin sold them, so how would I know that it's not wrong to sell drugs? And yet, he's in prison for selling drugs for 20 years. For doing something that no one told him was something he shouldn't be doing. And one last story. There was a young, I'm he's in his 40s, and uh, he was in my wife's group. And he was so brokenhearted because he had gotten drunk on a, on a weekend, just a good old boy, just out having fun. And he gets into a wreck. And he kills someone. As tragic that is, but the tragedy is, it was his son. Think about that a minute. He was responsible for the death of his own son. Because he was out having a good time. But didn't take consideration the consequences of that action. 
of not being responsible to know that his son was at risk. I know it wasn't intentional. He didn't deliberately go out to do that. But his action had consequences and very severe ones. His family hated his guts and wouldn't talk to him. He was so self-loathing that he couldn't see how God could ever forgive him for what he'd done. God would forgive us for everything. Anything. All we have to do is in John 1, 9 says, if we will ask and seek forgiveness, He will give us forgiveness. It doesn't matter what we've done. No matter how times we've done it. He's always going to be there for us. We have no count. There's no buybacks. There's no milligans. Uh, our sin, as long as we can forgive and, and move on, please will forgive us and bring us right back into the fold. Lord, if you would, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Lord and precious Heavenly Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit is here today. That you would keep these men and women and children safe as they race, as they go home, as they go back to the lives that they do during the week, to school, to their jobs, to their businesses, to their personal lives. The Lord, that they remember that Jesus loves them, died for them on the cross, and he was resurrected to give us hope and to give us light of eternity. And Lord, we thank you for these things. We thank you for the opportunity to be with these folks at these races. And God, we thank you again that Jesus Christ paid the price, that we would have an opportunity not to pay the price for our sins, but to accept him and accept eternal life. It is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. We pray you were blessed by today's message. We have some amazing people who are willing to go to the four corners of this nation to tell you about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if something in the message today, in the service of the music or whatever you saw or heard, touched you, and you want to reach out to us, please do so. Our information will be here. You can reach out to the ministry at 704. 473-4212 or you can get all of our information at godspeedministry.com we want you to know God personally powerfully and passionately because we are preparing to become his bride when he returns for us or when we leave this earth so we want to make sure that you have that relationship with Him. That's our main priority. It's not just to give you a head knowledge, but a heart knowledge. To be adopted by the King of the universe and the Lord of Lords and to have all your sins washed away so that you walk in victory in this world. Godspeed Ministry exists to connect people to God and then to each other in service to bring other people who are hurting, lost, worried, confused, and afraid into the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if that's you, make sure that you reach out to us. You can reach out to us in the comments, in the messenger, and again at GodFeedMinistry.com. We look forward to hearing from you. And if this message was a blessing to you and you are already walking with God and this just fired you up to walk even closer with Him, leave us a heart and let us know. And we'll see you in heaven. Godspeed.